look at solving this system of equations now using a calculator. We've done it by hand, and this, is, this isn't a very complicated one because it's only two equations with two unknowns. But we're going to go over and we're going to uh, look at the calculator and see how that would work out. So the first step is to actually go over and enter all of your information in using uh, the calculator under its matrix menu. So you notice the word matrix right here. It's in blue, so that's going to be second and matrix. It'll bring up our matrices. These are just blank matrices that we wanted to plug stuff in. And you can see I've already got something plugged into A and B. So let's, uh, let's look at those. If I go over to edit and I hit enter, now notice my cursor is on number one, which is the matrix A. It'll show me what's in that matrix. I can see that here it's, it's two, three, four, and negative nine. If you go back and look at what we had earlier, that's matrix A, two, three, four, and negative nine. Right, so I just kind of brought that over and I plugged it into my matrix A in the equation in the calculator. All right, the next step, I'm going to quit out of this and then go back and look at oops, second matrix. And we're going to look at matrix B. If you look at matrix B, it has 2 and negative 1. If we go back to our equation and look over here at matrix B, and that's what we have right here, 2 and negative 1. So make sure that you tell it to be the right size. So 2, enter, 1, enter, and it'll rearrange, it'll rewrite your matrix to be the right size and you can enter those corresponding numbers. All right, we're going to go back and we will quit out of this. Now, if you remember, the operation that we did to solve this was A inverse times B. And it could be any letter, but it's that inverse of this matrix times the coefficient matrix on the other side, which in this case it would be your matrix for your, your, uh, your constant values. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead, second, bring up that matrix. This I don't want to edit it. I actually want to use it. So uh, it's default to that. I'm going to hit Enter. But I don't want just the first matrix. I want the inverse. So A inverse. And then I want to go get matrix B. I go down. I hit Enter. And, there, and that's exactly what we had here. And I happen to use A and B in my in my drawing here because I knew that we were going to come back and look at this. And I tend to do that all the time, so I don't I don't get confused. And so if I hit Enter, it shows me here I have 0.5 and 0.33333. And so let's change that to fractions. And I believe we know what that's going to be, but it's one half and one third exactly what we found it to be here. And that was a lot faster. Now, is it relevant that you know how to do this by hand? Absolutely, because it's matrix multiplication, it's finding inverses, determinants, all of the things that we learned how to do last week, you're putting into practice and you're applying that knowledge. So knowing how to do this, yes, I'm going to ask you to do uh, at least one of these by hand. So you can prove to me that you really have learned how to use those things. Now, will I let you use the calculator? Absolutely. You know, and specifically, we're going to go and talk about one that you probably, I probably will not show you how to do by hand. So we're going to go in and we're going to look at another matrix. So we're going to go in and I'm going to go back to matrix A. And we're going to introduce, uh, we're going to create some new matrices so that we can solve this by uh, using a calculator. And this one's going to be a bigger one. It's going to be a 3 by 3. So I'm going to edit that matrix. And so we're going to have a 3 by three matrix. So well, let me go uh, and show you what matrix we're going to be working with. So I'll scroll down here. The new matrix equations that we're going to be working with right now is it's going to be x minus 2y plus 3z equals 3. And then we're going to have 2x plus y plus 5z equals 8. And then 3x minus y minus 3z is equal to negative 22. Now this is three variables, and notice I have three equations this time. That's kind of how it works. 
as long as I have the same number of equations that I do unknown values, then doing this method will always tend to work out. The only problem you'll have is if you create a matrix here with the, the coefficient matrix, if it will generate a zero um, determinant, then this method won't work. Okay, and you'll get an error in the calculator. So uh, this one's not going to work that. We're going to go ahead and enter those values into the matrix here. And so we're going to enter the coefficient matrix first. So that's going to be 1, negative 2, 3, and then 2, 1. And if you're watching along with this, I encourage you to to rewind it to the beginning and actually do this with me if you have your calculator with you. Uh, it would really make sense that you can kind of follow along after you've done it with me or even by yourself. Make sure that you really do understand what it is that uh, that's going on. Now I'm going to double check because I make a habit of checking. So 1, negative 2, 3, 2, 1, 5, 3, negative 1, negative 3. Great. Going to go ahead and I'm going to go back in to matrix B this time. Oops, second quit. Always quit first because sometimes it gets tricky and you put it trying to put a matrix inside a matrix and that gets kind of up, not really not good. So we're going to go down to matrix B. And this one's going to be the uh, three numbers on the other side. So this is going to end up being a three by one. And so we can have three. Oops. That is a 1. And we're going to have 3, 8, and negative 22. Not negative, negative 22, but there we go. So I've got that done. I'm going to go right uh, to my home screen and do what I just did earlier. Now, a little trick, if you have a updated calculator, I can scroll back up to previous entries and answers and I can select those with just going up choosing enter and I have it here. Now A is different than what it was last time because I went ahead and entered the matrix menu and changed it. So A and B here are both different. So I've hit enter. There we go. My answer is uh, four, negative 4, 1, and 3. So if I go back into my matrix, if I were going to write this out then what it would have looked like would have been 1, negative 2, 3, then 2, 1, 5, 3, negative 1, negative 3. And so this was matrix A. And then we would have had here x, y, and z, which would have been equal to the constant values 3, 8, and negative 22. So this is the equation that I was solving. And after it's all said and done, what I really get down to, when I, if I were to actually attempt this one by hand, it would be a lot like the other one, just a lot more involved, a lot longer, because you have all this other stuff. Then my solution is going to be this matrix, negative 4, 1, and 3. So negative 4, 1, and 3. And that tells me exactly that x right and so it's just right what it looks like x is 4 y is 1 and z is positive 3 so x is negative 4 y is 1 z is 3 exactly and that took almost no time if I understand that uh, I can take this matrix and I can take this matrix enter those into my calculator just like this plug up this a inverse b and punch it in like that, and I've got my solution. Okay, super simple. And I'm not going to ask you to do a three by three by hand. That's a that's a lot more work than you're that you even know how to do. So no worries about that. But what you will have to do is this part. So make sure if you haven't checked out the video where I do the solving the systems by hand, make sure you check that out. Um, make sure that if you haven't practiced it by hand or by using the calculator. Uh, make sure that you take a, a minute and try this on your own. Don't just think you can watch it and it sinks in really well. If you've got any questions, bring in the class.